Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today, Avoid Epic Webinar Fails, Five Tips for Better Presentations. My name is Maggie Bliss, and I'll be your moderator this morning. Today, I'm joined by Justin McKeffey, our Blue Jean Senior Product Marketing Manager, and David Maldo of Let's Do Videos, founder and CEO. So before we kick things off, there's a few housekeeping items I want to go over. First, we are using the Blue Jeans Events product, so you as an attendee are in a one-way viewing experience. But if you look on the right-hand side of your screen, on the third icon down is the moderator chat feature. So if you have any technical issues, please post them in there, and I'll work quickly to address those. Um, last, The last icon is the Q&A chat feature. So if you have any questions today for David or Justin, please put them in there, and we'll address them um, throughout the presentation and definitely at the end. And then this webinar is being live tweeted. So if you want to join in on the conversation, please use the hashtag webinar fails and tag blue jeans net. Um, and let's do video. So before we kick things off, oh, lastly, we will record this and send it to everyone after the event. So if we don't answer your questions at the end, please tweet us, please send them in the follow up email and we'll get those answered. And I'll pass that off to Justin. Hey, thank you so much, Maggie, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Very excited to get to talk to you about Epic Webinar Fails and the top five tips to avoid some of those webinar fails. It's an extremely relatable subject these days, isn't it? We've been hosting a lot of webinars lately, especially in this remote work culture and work from home environment. And so happy to be speaking today and hearing all of these insights from David Naldo of Let's Do Video. Here's a quick breakdown about what we're gonna talk about today. We'll first learn about Let's Do Video as a company. What are the types of uh, research, what type of uh, analysis and different industry insights can David provide and uh, what his company does? Also, we'll go through those top five tips and considerations if you are hosting these webinars from home. We'll do a recap and a summary. And as Maggie mentioned, we definitely want to encourage you to ask questions at the end. If there's anything that you'd like more clarity on or if you've got some interesting, funny stories, maybe awful nightmare type stories, chat them into all good stuff, fair game. And uh, we certainly would like to hear from you about that. And so without further delay, David, I'll pass it over to you right now. Please explain to folks who is Let's Do Video. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me here. My name is David Maldo. I'm the CEO and founder of Let's Do Video. And like a lot of us, uh, everything changed for me this year uh, to the point where not only what I do changed, but almost who, who I am has changed. And the screenshot you're looking at is from what I call the before times. And, and in the before times, I call myself a visual collaboration industry analyst. And what that means is I worked on business video, uh, the meeting room stuff, the stuff you work on, you use at the office. Uh, this the, the stuff your boss gives you an account to use. And I worked with a lot of companies like Blue Jeans. And the screenshot you're seeing above is is the, the the type of work I would do working with these companies. This is a video we made showing the Blue Jeans smart meetings feature, uh, which by the way is not the um, topic uh, of this discussion. But if you Google let's do video Blue Jeans smart meetings, you'll find this video and I I, it's just one of the, it's one of those features you really, really like. There's a lot of features in video conferencing these days. There's a lot to talk about. The smart meeting ones is, is one that I really like. Um, oh, we have a question. Starting out in webinar platform, which platform would you recommend? <laughs> well, right now we're using the blue jeans and, and, uh, it's, it's one of the first ones that I've used in this kind of interactive webinar years ago. And I mean, I'm here with my blue jeans friends, of course, but it really is definitely one to, 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 to look at. Um, now, um, can we drop the share for just a second? Great answer, by the way, to the webinar question. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I, I want to be full full screen now because that screenshot was me from the before times. And now we're in the now times, and things have changed for me. When your company is called Let's Do Video and the world starts using video for everything, people start reaching out to you for help. And since the pandemic hit, I'm still working with companies like Blue Jeans, but I've been working with what I've always really wanted to do, work with real people who use video all the time. And I've been doing a lot, there, there have been two, two areas where I've been helping. People who have said, our teams are now remote teams. How do I keep my team under control? And people who said, we used to do things in person, now we're doing live events. How do we do it? And that's the point of today's presentation. How do we do live events? And you know, epic fails, that's always fun to talk about, and that's always something you want to avoid. But the topic has kind of changed a, a little bit. What we used to think of as an epic fail isn't as epic anymore. I want you to, I'm, I'm gonna kind of contradict myself now. 
I'm going to say the only epic fail is not doing it. It's, it's okay to be on video. It's okay to make little mistakes. It's even okay to have mini epic fails. You don't want real epic fails. But things that we used to consider epic fails in the past are okay now. The mistake is not doing it. And, you know, we used to think of, um, we used to think of presentations in, in a different way. This is the guy, let me share screen for a second here. Um, do I have the ability to share a screen? I didn't even think about that. Right hand panel, you'll see the little icon. Okay. That's an epic fail. I'm making sure I can uh, share a screen before I try to share a screen. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so let me. Uh... So this is the person that used to give your live uh, videos. He looks a little bit familiar. Someone who looks good in a suit. Someone who's ready to present. That's not how it is anymore. Today, the person who presents is the person who has the information. You got to be ready to present, and it's okay if you're not a presenter. It's okay if you don't look good in a suit. It's okay if you need a haircut. Uh, you should be comfortable. So these tips we're going to give you. In the old days, I used to present them as a checklist. You must do all of these items before you start your first stream. Otherwise, it is an epic fail. Now, it's not a, a checklist. Now, it's a journey. You start streaming today with what you got. And these tips to avoid epic fails, you're going to use them as you go along to increase um, uh, to increase your, to increase how good you look on video, to be honest, but also how effective you are and, and how many fails you can avoid. For example, we're going to give lighting tips. When I started streaming, this was my lighting solution. Now, now my wife wasn't so pleased that I broke one of our plastic plates, but I needed to shade it. I needed it to, to, to work for me, and I made it work. And I streamed this way for a while, and no one knew, and it was fine. This wasn't acceptable, you know, in, in the old days, but this is how you start your streaming journey. But I did what I needed to do to make it work for me. I made sure it was front lighting, not back lighting, things that we'll get into. So the point is, it really, the only epic fail is not doing that, is not, is not doing video at all. But with that, we're going to give you some tips. So you could do as an effective job as possible. And by the way, one of the tips that I want to start off with is interactivity. This isn't the presentations of the old day. This is interactive. I'm going to throw myself off now. I'm going to read chat. We're supposed to wait till the end to read chat. I'm going to read chat. Uh, what if we don't tweet seems like a limited option. Hey, any social media you got, if you want to share this on uh, Facebook or MySpace or whatever, whatever, Sarah, we love it. We love you and we love it. Um, just a heads up, this is the fail I learned. It's just a fail on purpose. Someone's in a webinar with me and, and, and someone else is getting the hair comments? I can't believe it. I usually get that. I'm just more right, surprised they're in. not caught up on uh, the more popular hair trends right now. I think having a nice cowlick looks pretty good on camera. That's just me. I, I dig it. I'm jealous. <laughs> All right, can we, can we bring back up the um, slide share? Let's get into our first tip. Absolutely. Here it is, David. So at number one, as we discussed, as we were preparing for this thing, is know your technology. So what features and tools should be completely familiar to moderators? So these are great examples of our epic fails. And, and I don't want you to take notes on this and say, these are the four things, check them off. These are just examples, and there are hundreds of other examples, bad things that can happen. Um, the mic still hot is, is one of my favorites. I, I heard this just, just and I'm, it sounds like a made-up story. This honestly happened. It was another one of my sponsors. It wasn't, it wasn't Blue Jeans, but they were doing a, a live event, and it ended. And by the way, they were not using Blue Jeans as their platform. They were using one of those old-school webinar platforms where you have to, the webinar company has to hit the buttons for you, and you're not allowed to do anything. And it was, they thought it was over. And they started talking amongst themselves. Luckily, they didn't say anything too bad, but they were, oh, that was a nightmare. I couldn't get connected. I can't believe that. I hope no one noticed the problems we had. It was really embarrassing. And then they realized they were still alive and they were mortified. Epic fail. But again, not, should, shouldn't scare you away from trying this. It's okay that that happened. No one got fired over it. They were just embarrassed. Rogue commenters in chat, uh, if, someone, if the people's making fun of Justin's hair start, start being rude about it, we're going to have to deal with that and kick them out. Um, vetting appropriate questions, making sure if you have a camera, you, you got it working. All of these things can be epic fails, but the key is to solve all of them, and hundreds of other examples, is to know your technology. 
it's just blue jeans, guys. I, we make blue jeans meetings calls all day. There's a few extra buttons on the streaming. In the old days, uh, like I was talking about, those old webinar platforms, you didn't have to know the technology. What you did is you paid way too much money to have some company send you their software to use, and they would push the slides, and they would do everything, and you would just sit there and talk, and you're allowed to, allowed to touch anything, and it didn't work half the time. Now it's your technology. It's your blue jeans meeting. It's your blue jeans stream, and it's honestly, it's not that hard. It's not like learning. It's not like learning guitar. Uh, it, it's it's just a few controls. But the difference is, if someone starts being rude in chat, do you want to spend thirty seconds saying, "Where's that button? Where's that button? Where's that button?" Or do you want to say, "Nuked. That guy's gone." Uh, even me. Hey, I had a mini epic fail at the beginning. I've been using too many different systems. I, I'm an analyst. I use them all, and I, I I got my buttons mixed up, and it took me an extra five seconds should have practiced a little bit more, I've been a little bit less embarrassed. But you know what? If I wasn't familiar with this, it might have taken me another 30 seconds and I would have been more embarrassed. Just know where your buttons are, know where your systems is, get comfortable with it. And these fails and fails that, that we haven't even thought of, a lot of them you'll, you'll be avoiding, you'll just be, you'll just be comfortable with them. Uh, John says, also make sure the mic is on when starting the presentation. You know, that is something I still mess up because I try to be a good presenter and mute myself when I'm not talking because there's a wife who walks around, there's a kitten who walks around, uh, there's there's lawnmowers, there's neighbors, you know, who I, I might sneeze, I might cough, and I'm very, very good about remembering to mute. And I'm not so good about remembering to unmute. So if you watch any of my presentations, you'll probably hear someone at some point say, David, you're muted. You know what? I unmute and I continue. It's a mini epic fail. I get over it. Ideally, don't do that. But another quick question in chat. Do you re recommend setting recorded meeting to people who attended after the meeting? I, I recommend making it available to anyone. It's there. It's easy to do. BlueJeans just does it and it's just a link. If you want it, you got the link. So that's, that's what I have for Know Your Technology. Should we move on to the next tip? Definitely. Great. Tips, definitely know your way around the interface, know which buttons you're pushing and which button does what function. It's definitely important to steer the presentation along properly. So build your webinar stage, tip number two. So David, how do you create a professional setting and background? And, and this is another thing where it is, this. these used to be checklist items. I, and I'm, I'm not saying that figuratively, I've written documents having these items with check marks next to them that people had to check off. And now it is, it is just a journey. It's all about just making you look better. Um, but you don't have to go crazy. For example, for this presentation, sometimes I use this green screen for effects and I, and I told my friends at BlueJeans, oh, you know what, I'll, I'll move it away and I'll, and I'll hang some things on the wall. And they said, David, this is you. This is your office, this is you, just be yourself. It's okay. So there's, there's being yourself and being okay, but there's also getting things right. For example, the way I'm framed. It's not that big of a deal, but I'm trying to be centered in the frame. Some people like to be a little closer. Uh, Justin's got a little bit more of a um, uh, news broadcaster. Some people like to be more like you're hanging out in their living room. I like to be somewhere in the middle. But if you think about those sort of things, uh, it makes a difference. And you could you know, read the slides for yourself. We all know an, an external camera is better quality than a laptop. Um, backlighting, you know, I'm going to spend a second on back, backlighting because uh, it, it's just really easy to get right and important. When I, I have lights now, and they weren't that expensive. On Amazon, Amazon, I just looked up photo lighting. But when I had that one overhead light, I pulled my desk back because I wanted the light in front of me. And the reason is I, I use this, maybe it's a little bit childish but I, I, or childlike, but I think of this, this mental image to help me is um, I think of myself as the moon. And I think of the camera as the earth, and I think of the light as the sun, which is easy because it's the light of the sun. So what happens if the sun is behind the moon? You get an eclipse. All you see is a dark circle, and you see a lot of people on video like that. Now what happens if the sun is you know, behind the earth? You see the moon perfectly. So keep your sun behind your earth. <laughs> you know, it's a simple thing, but it makes a huge difference. Um, on the audio side, uh, I'm using, I have a mic, I want to sound nice and I managed to get a nice mic. You don't need that. You can use whatever headset you have. But the key is I have it, this, these earphones in because I want to avoid the sound coming out of my speakers and into my mic and then back out of my speakers and into my mic and out of my speakers. You know, sometimes you get an echo. A BlueJean software actually has anti-echo 
stuff in it that works pretty good. But depending on your room and what's going on, if you're using other software, it's just a general, it's, it's, it's just in general, it's better to have um, the earphones in. But um, just in general, take a few seconds to make yourself look nice. This, is, this, this actually happened to me a few months ago and it still cracks me up. Um, actually, can we drop the, drop the slide deck so I can tell this little story? I wanna be face to face. You bet. Thanks. So when the pandemic hit, everyone, my family, like everyone's family, started doing these big video meetings. Everyone get on video and, and it was chaos and it's a nightmare. Everyone's unmuted, everyone's talking at once. No one can hear each other, no one knows what's going on and it's beautiful and we loved it and we had a wonderful time, it was amazing. But someone took uh, 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 some screenshots and put them up on Facebook. Hey, look at our family meeting, look how everyone looks. And the way a lot of these, these things, a lot of my cousins are, are women and their husbands, they're the ones who are in control of the laptop. So they set it up. So the husbands get on the laptops and or the, their phones or whatever. And, and my cousins are walking around behind them peeking over their shoulders. And when we looked at the screenshots, I, I was like this. I didn't put on makeup for it, I didn't dress up. I think I might've had my, my hair pulled back because you know, so my mom won't say anything, but I, I didn't do anything in particular. I was just framed nicely. And all my cousin's husbands, they were all with the looking up the nose and looking down the head and the light behind them and all this stuff. And the Facebook lit up with my cousins yelling at their husbands, how come cousin David looks nice and you're such a slob? Why is my husband such a slob? I'm like, your husband's really good looking. I know he's good looking, but why does he look like a slob? And it was just a matter of, the simple things, not, not spending thousands of dollars, but just taking a minute to say, okay, here's the window. Let's set up this way instead of setting up this way. Uh, and it's worth doing it. And it seems like a personal tip, but it's also a business tip. You know, if, if you look cuter, people are going to want to work with you more. <laughs> it's always about looking as cute as possible. And that's what this, these tips really are. I, I, it sounds silly, but you want to look cute on, you want to look cute on camera. You want to be comfortable. So let's um, let's lead on to the next tip. I think that's it for our webinar stage. Absolutely. Hey, I loved it. your thoughts also on your background and how they can be a reflection of your personality and your character and your identity. My boss has a record player in his background, and that inevitably leads us into music conversations sometimes, which we all know it's good to have some thing you can relate on before going all shop and talking about nothing but work. But it's nice to have that kind of extension of who it is you're talking to in the background. It doesn't need to be all business all the time. So uh, great stuff there. Yeah, it's I, I mean, that's that's super real. Just before I let you get on, uh, you know, I just started, I just met you recently, started working with you recently. You saw my guitar, you play guitar. You talked about the song you're working on. I made a video. Now we're sharing guitar videos back and forth, and and we work together. Isn't it so much nicer to work together with someone who 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 we could talk about the hard part of Tom Sawyer with? It makes it fun. There's nothing better than starting the day with a little rush, and you know it's cool because you it's maybe an unexpected byproduct of this whole work from home life and culture that we live in right now. Because man, we have way more in common with our coworkers or with analysts or, or customers than we ever realized just based on what is in their background. So I've definitely loved that too. It's, it's been cool. Um, so I'm to looking, that end. I'm looking at chat and uh, uh, Angela says she has a card catalog in her background because she's a librarian. That's awesome. We, can we get a moderator message her and talk about bringing her onto, onto video so we could see that at the end of this? Because I'd love to see that. If she, I don't want to, you know, if, if, if you're camera shy, you're camera shy, it's all good, but. I know uh, one of the cool features about Blue Jeans is that any of the any of the attendees can pop on video with us. So that is I'll true, and look. Maggie would know the answer to this, but we may have disabled Ray's hand for this one, and I'm not sure if that's true or not. But uh, you bet, if if uh, Angela would like to show up, and we have that feature enabled, absolutely. Right, I'll let Maggie take over on that, and I'll let you continue with the slides. Excellent. Okay, so moving on to our next tip: interact and engage your audience. So David, how do you drive two-way dialogue rather than just offering a one-way talking head type of a format? This is a really tough thing, and I think it's gonna take some people some time. Um, and this is one of those things where if you don't do it the way I say, that's okay. I, there are some people who are gonna watch this and they're gonna say, oh, no, 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 I'm doing it the old way. And the old way, we start with our on-camera presenters. Now, I think we can build a slide here. Yeah, there we go. And the on-camera presenters would just shoot in one direction, the viewers, and that was it. But now we really wanna be interactive. And I think a lot of this is culture that we're getting from 
other streaming platforms. Business streaming has always been, I'm giving my webinar, please hold your questions until the end so that you do not distract me from my presentation while I read the slides to you. Bullet point one says this, bullet point two says that. That's what we've done it forever. But, oh God, I feel so old saying, I, I almost started saying the kids. I almost started by saying the kids. Um, but it, it is true, it is the generation, the generation behind mine, I'm Generation X, it's the Millennials and the Generation Z. They've been streaming themselves on platforms. The big one is Twitch. Twitch, if you haven't heard of it, it's huge. And when you Google it, you'll say, this many people are streaming on it and I haven't heard of it. And if you had heard of it, it's because your, your kids were on it. <laughs> uh, but it's streaming, but it's a completely different interaction. And it's not just Twitch, it's also YouTube gaming, YouTube live, other things. And it's become about the chat really is all about the chat. It's not just, yes, we appreciate the chat here and we want to answer your questions at the end. Sometimes the chat is more important than the presentation. Sometimes it, the entire stream is just responding to the chat. The chat is magic. It really makes it so much better. And it's hard because yes, you do get thrown off. The, when I first started doing this, there were several times and it might happen now where I say, wait, where was I? Uh-oh. Um, let me just go back a slide and try to figure out where I was. You know what? It's worth it. If that happens to you, it's worth it. It didn't used to be worth it because, um, hey, we hired you to do this presentation and you got thrown off and now you're fired. Yeah, because you're the presentation person. Now you're just the person with the knowledge sharing the information. So why not interact with the people you're sharing the information with? You know, if you showed up because you had questions for me, um, I want you to ask them and I want to respond to them naturally. And you know what? It's more important than my presentation. Uh, we have a question behind you. Don't have Windu behind you. Yes, Brett, absolutely. Meredith, um, uh, the, uh, well, first, Brett, don't have Windu behind you. Exactly. That's like having the sun behind the moon. It'll just totally put you in the shadow. Uh, question about security advantages of blue jeans and Zoom. I think the blue jeans team could follow up with you separately on that. I'm just not into the going to the technical stuff today. We're just going into to use. Do you think it's better to have someone monitoring the chat and dealing with the questions that way rather than the presenter asking the questions instead? Meredith, great question. The better way is the way that the presenter feels comfortable with. I love reading the chat. I love interacting with you. I love knowing that Meredith has a question for me. I'm comfortable doing with that, that this way. A lot of presenters are not. If a presenter is uncomfortable, everyone's uncomfortable. So. And I think it's a skill that people are going to have to learn. I think maybe presenters who are used to doing it the old way are going to dip their toes in and start doing it the new way. I'm not going to give anyone a hard time if I attend a webinar and someone reads the slide deck. This is new stuff. But the more interactive you could be, as comfortably as you can be, uh, the better off we are. Uh, John, you're right. It is hard to answer questions and run presentations at the same time. Um, and if you're alone, you should factor in extra time, yes. If you do have someone helping, uh, a lot of times people have, some bigger streams will have multiple moderators in the chat answering all kinds of questions. Moderators are awesome. Uh, it's really preference. Um, I, I'm sorry, I'm totally interrupting this. I'm loving the chat right now. We're, we're gonna continue with the slides, but I can't help myself. Uh, M has a question, best tips for someone doing webinars solo in terms of have, handling questions and presenting at the same time. Do exactly what I'm doing it right right now, hopefully better. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. When I watch this later, I am going to cringe. I'm talking too fast. You're not supposed to talk fast when you do these things. That means you're nervous. Relax, David. <laughs> uh, just relax and be comfortable is the biggest tip. If, if you panic, people will know. And yes, your adrenaline's going to go up. Uh, I've seen streamers have a heart rate monitor and it shows on the screen their heart rates and their heart rates go up. Just, just do the best you can. Um, Angela says we have moderators gather the questions and try to consolidate like questions. That's a great idea. You, wanna, you don't want to answer the same question uh, over and over again. Um, Meredith, what if two co-presenters feel differently about that? Ooh, that would be an interesting situation. I guess, um, yeah, you'd have to hash it out. I, I, would, I would say that hopefully they try to work it in, out in a way that they're both comfortable. Uh, if the way that's less interactive is usually the easier way, and I would say, okay, let's be less interactive so everyone's comfortable. I don't want anyone to be uncomfortable. All right, let's get, let's get back to the, uh, to the uh, presentation uh, and then we'll keep doing the chat. I'm really having fun with this. And by the way, this is a learning experience. This is so new. We're going to watch this and say, is this the right way to do it? Try new things as a part of it. You know what is an epic fail? Not trying. Not trying new things and not trying video. 
Um, hey, uh, do we have anything to add on this slide or should we head to the next one? Well, I just want to make an observation and a perfect proof point about why it matters to engage your audience while you're talking as a presenter. And obviously it takes a certain degree of hand-eye coordination and mental coordination, but people are chatting in because they know you're chatting back to them. So the fact that you are addressing these questions and comments as they're happening, uh, it encourages more people to speak up and chime in and, and voice their opinions too. So it's, I'm literally watching it in real time. It's, it's proof of the, uh, of the feature and the value of it. So super cool. Yeah, that was amazing. We had a few, you know, you, a few brave souls who start and then everyone chimes in. Look at me. We have Meredith, we have Angela, we have John, Donna, Tammy. These are real people, Holly. I love all of you people. I really mean that. I really mean, and if I don't answer any of your questions, because you know this is a new skill and you miss things in chat when chat gets hot like this. Um, find me after at david at letsdovideo.com or find our, our moderators. I do want to answer all the questions. And if we don't, it's it's not because we didn't think it's a good question. It's because I'm, I'm just starting to get good at this, like guitar. You know, I couldn't play all the stuff at first, so uh, well, hopefully we'll get better. Oh, and that leads to our next slide. This is exactly what we're talking about, right? Exactly. So when do you open the floor for questions? What's the best practice for on the fly versus formal QA at the end? Yeah, and and the the answer is what the presenter is the most comfortable with because if you tr if you tried to make me do this last year or two years ago, it would have been a terrible presentation. I would have been so thrown off. I would have been so unprepared for this. I would have had such a hard time with it. It would have been really bad. Uh, now that I've been doing it a little longer, develop the skills, I can do it more and more, and hopefully get better at it. it, it, it but be open to it and try. Uh, try to encourage chat. Try to get good at looking at chat. Uh, I think the more interactive, the better. I've done so many of these webinars, and the last five minutes, when the chat started lighting up, that was that was amazing. That was that was like, you know, that's what it's all about. I, I mean, otherwise, honestly, I might as well we might as well just pre-record it. The way we used to do webinars, we might as well just pre-record them and take questions by email afterwards. Um, Merit, do you think it's better to have an open chat like this, or to have all the questions directed to a moderator so the questions are more pro private? Um, it actually it depends on two things. You know, Meredith, I'm glad you answered that question. I'm glad you asked that question because I've been saying that it just depends on the, the presentation, the presenter's preference. It depends on two things. It, it depends on the context. It depends on the type of presentation. If it's a type of thing where this, where it's really high level thoughts, high level stuff, um, I think it's okay to leave it open like this. But if uh, if it was a more technical presentation, for example, let's say I was um, uh, uh, giving a presentation on how to use certain software integrated with other software, you know, really technical stuff. Then all the questions have to get answered. It's almost like a class. People need to that material so they can pass the test. So then I would might say, let's direct all the questions to a moderator so we can make sure they all get answered. Um, when you get more open, you know, it gets a little looser. You lose some things. Uh, so, so this is more interactive. It's a lot more fun, but it's it's less what's the word efficient effective um, it's less locked down you know for formal situations if if it was a law school class I would say you know questions go in Q and A uh, Brendan said we've disabled chat in our events for fear we distract the presentation if your present presenters are afraid of getting distracted that's fine to disable chat I would recommend taking a risk now and then I not you know I it, it's really hard because if it's if it's so scary that you're not going to be able to present then you can't do it but look at what you're missing out on just look at what you're missing out on here um should we go to a couple more questions here uh John handling handling live interactions can be difficult you should plan beforehand how you will handle it you can be informal or set yourself time to interact it's best with two one to present one to interact then you could switch off Yep, all of that is great. All those tips are great, especially the the idea of just just planning it out and being ready for it, um, and and being ready to to learn by it, being ready for things to go wrong. Um, how many mistakes have I made already? Right? How many flubs have I made? How many times have I said, "Oh man, you know," all of those things are wrong. I'm looking at the numbers. You're all still here with me, by the way. Thank you. I love you for that, and thank you for Donna for saying nice things. We love you, David. Love you. <laughs> Oh, we have a question for Justin. How are you presenting through PowerPoint, Keynote, Google Slides? We're having a hard time with Keynote and presenting. Oh, Keynote's that Apple thing, right? It is. I'm just sharing my screen right now. So I've got the moderator dashboard open on one side, and then I'm just sharing my other screen with a full screen PowerPoint view on the other side and flipping through as uh, David is pushing it along. 
Great. Super easy. Thanks, hey, Sarah. hey, one one thought to David about what you said too with Q and A, this on the fly versus formal at the end. I definitely remember from personal experience when I first started doing these. I really wanted like the last ten minutes, like a cut and dry ten minutes devoted to Q and A. But we have found when it comes to really interacting with the audience, creating engagement, and creating content that sticks with folks, if your presentation content and your Q and A content are equal lengths it creates a much more collaborative environment. So it's it's kind of like a mm -hmm. one to one ratio where you devote half of it to content and half of it to Q&A. Why not? If folks signed up, you ought to bring them into the conversation if they've got something to say. Yeah, absolutely. Um let me see a few more comments. Branded backgrounds, which call out the speaker's name. And uh, yes, if you if you got virtual background technology, I didn't set up for this stream, but sometimes I do. It's nice. You can give yourself a, a, a lower third and put your logo up. Uh, that's all fun stuff. Not necessary. If it scares you off, don't don't worry about it. But if you're into it, you could you could dive into it. Uh, Fern has an amazing question. There's questions coming in from event chat and coming in from Q and A, which makes it hard to check. What do you recommend? I recommend that um, our presenter, David Maldo, click the Q&A and see what's going on in there. <laughs> Be a better presenter. That's what we mean about it being a, a learning experience. Um, oh, wow, there's some good questions in here. I'm going to try to, try to go, actually, you know what? Let's leave the Q&A questions for the end and keep the chat open as we've been doing. Is it the best way to handle it? I don't know. I'm learning. But is it one way to handle it? Yeah. So that, that's what we're going to do. That's how we're going to handle it. Thank you, Fern, for the question. We're going to keep Q and we're going to keep chat open, and I'm going to keep looking at it. And at the end, I'm going to pop that Q and A button and see what's there. Um, so, are we ready? Uh, is there a specific reason Justin is controlling the presentation rather than David? Kind of a kind of a, a, a toy toss. Toy toss. I can't believe I said that. Coin toss. <laughs> there you go. Epic fail. That clip we're putting on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Coin toss is a popular expression. I've heard that one before. Oh, are we ready for the next? Uh, the next slide is my favorite. You bet. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. The, is it the next one? Do you so. want to answer uh, oh. the gentleman's question? About, are we operating about, through uh, an app or through a web page? Uh, me I'm presenting on a versus page. you, you uh, sharing slides? Oh, yeah. It was just, it was just either, either one of us could do it. I'm like, I can do it. You want to do it? And you were like, I can do it. You want to do it? I'm like, okay, you do it. Literally just preferential. Yep. Here's your favorite slide. Yeah. Humanize your delivery. David, where's the line between broadcaster and conversationalist? The line has gotten very, very, very gray. Uh, the line used to be very, <laughs> very not gray. You know, I, I used to get haircuts because I wanted to be a broadcaster. And I used to wear a suit and a tie. And, and I used to speak very formally, and I wouldn't make jokes. And if I said uh, coin toss instead of coin toss, I would have been mortified. And now I'm myself. I'm completely over the line to conversationalist, and, and some people are somewhere in between. Uh, but you definitely want to be more human. That, that slide on the right, how many in chat, give me a, a, a yes or an exclamation point or something in chat if you recognize that um, go with the flow BBC News picture. From the, it was from a viral video a few years ago. Anybody remember that? I Look in the chat. Remember. Someone has to remember that. <laughs> well, if you don't remember what happened, he was um, talking to the BBC remotely on you know, some topic, foreign policy or finance or something. He's some expert, and his children came into the room. Eileen remembers. Mike remembers. Tommy remembers. Yes. Data remembers. Okay, everyone remembers. Okay, so now I know how long the, the chat delay is. That's awesome. Donna remembers. Brett. <laughs> Lisa. How funny was this video? Jennifer, Brett, Meredith, everybody. Everybody remembers Lydia. <laughs> I died when I saw this. It was hysterical. And I thought about it. And you know what, was, what came to occur to me was if he had just gotten up and said, oh, I'm sorry, my, my kid walked in the room. Let me walk her out. It might have gotten a little viral, a little viral, because that girl is so cute. But the fact that he was so awkward, oh my goodness, why was he so awkward? Look at that picture. Look at the angle of his arm. What, what is that angle of his arm? Why, is he, why doesn't he turn around? Why is he so stiff? Why is he so weird? Why is he so awkward? Why is he, why is he so not human? And I studied it and I studied it. Put the baby on his lap. Right, Eileen. Put the baby on his lap and keep going. Yeah, the daughter came in on a little wheeler. 
scoot, scooting in on the little wheeler, and then the, and then the wife dove in, which is hilarious. <laughs> but he, he could he could have avoided all that if he just walked out the first kid. And it occurred to me, I had a theory. I had a theory of why he didn't get up and just take care of it. And my theory was, just between us, that guy wasn't wearing any pants. I don't think he was wearing any pants. He looked like he was locked into his chair, right? Look at the angle. Look at that picture. Why isn't he turning around? Why isn't he getting up? Yeah. So, so that, so my, for a while I was giving presentations and I was saying, you want to be natural on camera. So where, and I'm wearing, I'll stand up. I'm wearing pants right now. Wear pants. So that way you don't get embarrassed like that. And then I saw in a later interview, he said, he swore he was wearing pants. So I'm changing my advice. The advice isn't wear pants. The advice is act like you're wearing pants. <laughs> act like a person. Nobody's going to know the difference either way, but at least act the part, right? Right, right. Oh, Angela shared. Thank you, Angela. Uh, 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 don't click on it now, but everyone click on that link afterwards and watch the video that Angela shared. <laughs> you know, yeah, if he just acted normal, if he acted human, if he acted like a person instead of a broad, instead of pretending to be a broadcaster, this would not have been so viral that we all remember it, what, six, five, six years later? Um, so act natural. And, and one trick, by the way, I call that the video conferencing mullet. Back in the 80s, we had a mullet where it was, uh, the hair was business on top, party in the back. So it's, it's business on top, pajamas on the bar, the bottom is the, is the video conferencing mullet. Um, <laughs> but one trick that, that I learned that really, really helped me switch between a broadcaster and being a conversationalist is being not being afraid to defer questions because when i wore a suit and i had short hair and i had a tie and i was david maldo serious business analyst i felt like i was expected to know everything i'm the expert if i don't know then why am i here why am i why am i here giving a presentation if i can't answer that really great question from chat mortified mortified if that would happen to me, a question that I'm not comfortable answering. And you know what I would do? Worst thing, I would try to answer it. I would try to answer a question that I didn't know how to answer and I'd look like an idiot. And, and it, would, it, it would, oh, it makes you, and you know what you wind up looking like? A politician, <laughs> right? Because you're trying to say something that sounds good even if you don't know what you're talking about. It's the worst. And you know what I do now? I say, that's a really good question, and, and I don't want to give you a bad answer. I, 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 you know, let me look at it, because I was looking at something recently. Usually I was looking at something recently, something to do with it. I can find something. I can answer the question. I am an analyst. but I'm not supposed to know everything off the top of my head, and neither are you. It is so super okay to say, wow, that is a great question. Can I get back to you? Can I get your email so I can get back to you on that? And once you realize it's like a magic trick, once you realize that you're free, you're free. You could just be yourself. Look, you know your stuff. They wouldn't be asking you to give this presentation if you didn't know your stuff. The presentation is on, is on your project. It's on something you did. It's on something you're working on. There's a reason you're there. You're not expected to know everything in the world. So that helps, you know, be conversational, be, be it. So um, you have anything else to add on that? I think that's all I got on that one. That's a great point. I, I really do think on both sides of this graphic, so like on the right, exactly why dig yourself into a hole if you can't properly answer it? There is nothing wrong with saying we'll get back to you. We'll email you after the fact. And then on the left, I go with the flow, Joe. I mean, really, just uh, it, it, life happens. Things in the background are bound to happen if we all work from home. The dog is barking. The kids run in the room. There's a band that starts practicing next door. Who, who the heck knows? But go with the flow because otherwise you're going to look too stiff for for your own good, for anyone's own good. So I'm with you 100%. Good tips. Yeah. Um, uh, let me see. How long since your last haircut? Uh, three and a half years. And for as a special thanks to Blue Jeans, because I appreciate this, we, we have some, I don't know if it'll show up, we have some Blue Jeans Blue hiding behind the purple. It's special for our friends at Blue Jeans. Thank you. Um, yeah. Cool spirit. Uh, anyone hear about the poor Jennifer video on YouTube? There's three or four videos that you might be referring to. They're all hilarious. <laughs> um, I give out my email at the end of the presentation so participants can connect with me with questions. Yes. Great, great tip. Great, great tip. And yeah, make sure you actually do follow up with the answer.
All right, so um, let's let's head on to our next slide. You bet. This is oh, our Q and A. Our Q and A time, exactly, and we've been doing it on the fly for the whole time. But uh, if you have any additional questions, please chat them in or use the Q&A box about webinar technology, about knowing your technology, about setting the, the scene and creating a professional webinar stage, about interactivity and engagement with the audience, about how to manage QA and chat, different presentation tips, even from a general point of view, like being able to defer questions, those types of things, totally uh, straight ahead and, and uh, Warranted for finally connecting with your crowd. How do you make a better connection and strengthen your community by giving these webinar presentations? Uh, all fair game. Please, uh, please use those tools on the right hand side there. And uh, David, I I know we're doing kind of a free form thing here. We we do normally bring Maggie back in the conversation to facilitate these things. So uh, Maggie, if you're there, please uh, take over, and I'll send it over to you. And if not. I've got a hunch that uh, uh, David is perfectly okay, capable I, of, of yeah, <laughs> fielding me, uh, every it, single question that comes in. I'm 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 so anxious to get to the first question because you know, all right, you'll, you'll see why. Jackie asks, I, I recently attended a webinar where one of the attendees dominated the session and the presenter didn't have time to present. How would you handle someone who loves to hear himself? Um, I would ask someone who works with me how they handle me. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's always fun to be self-deprecating. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love that question. No, that that really that really can be tough, and and sometimes you might have to be a little direct and and say to the attendee, hey, um, you know, we we really appreciate your interaction, but uh, we got a lot to get through today, so we're gonna we're gonna hold off on questions for a while and let our presenter get through the next few slides, and then we'll open it up again. You might just have to kind of take a time out on questions. Um. Amy asks, I attended a webinar where the on-screen moderator asked questions of participants and panel and waited for reply, resulting in long silences that were awkward. But what's a better way to do that? Um, the, the, that that's a, a moderator training thing. Uh, and I just I have, I'm, I'm working on myself because um, if you watch some of my videos, you know, I have some awkward pauses. But it, you, you really need to avoid saying, does anyone on the panel have a thought on that? You need to say, hey, Justin, what's your thought on that? You got to call out people on the panel, and that also helps because that also actually answers the helps with the previous question. If you just say, "Okay, so here's our next question for the panel," I'm going to answer all the questions. <laughs> you know, the the div is going to answer all the questions. So you need to say, "Let's give this one to David. Let's give this one to Tim. Let's give this one to Bill." Actually, I also want to hear Tim's thought on that. You got to you got to step up the mo the moderation. The best keynotes uh, that you attend also when you see a number of panelists on stage, the best ones are always, I believe, thanks to, yes, intelligent panelists, but also a rock star moderator that gives everyone equal time. Everybody wants to pitch their product, but but those people that are able to manage the time and, and content that's uh, being distributed among all four of them, those those folks are, are super talented. Uh, someone saying they're seeing that my video has been uh, a little choppy and I've had some lip, lip, lip sync issues. Um, my guess is it's something on my end. I'm, I'm always running, testing different video software and hooking up different cameras, and I probably should have rebooted more more quickly than I rebooted. Um, hopefully, it wasn't wasn't too bad. Um, oh, Brendan asked about uh, wireless Bluetooth headsets or not? Not yes, and and yes and no. I don't recommend any headsets for anyone. I recommend your personal preference. All the headsets out there are so good now. The wired ones are good. The wireless ones, the wireless ones are good. Um, even moderately priced ones are decent audio, audio quality, and the expensive ones are like magic. So it, it's not, um, you know, you know, with some things I have specific recommendations, but with headsets I don't recommend over the ear or in the ear or the, the over, you know, the back. It's 100% because you you gotta wear that thing all day. It's like clothing. I consider it like a piece of clothing. So it's whatever you're comfortable in. Um, do you provide examples of best practice webinars using BlueJeans? Uh, well, hopefully, hopefully this is one, but I think there's some. So there's definitely some more content on the on the BlueJeans website, um, and and on Let's Do Video. If you look at the Let's Do Video podcast, there's all sorts of um, best practices for webinars and whatnot. Um, recently, saw some neat background screens on BlueJeans meetings. How do you add, modify those if we don't have interesting backgrounds already? I haven't played with that. Can you can you speak to that, Justin? The new virtual backgrounds feature for meetings, for sure. Simple, yeah. easy, 
it's simple to set up. So in the upper left-hand corner of your BlueJeans instance, as long as you've got the most updated software from BlueJeans, just click, click in the upper left on Mac or PC. Um, you'll see the preferences option, open up that box, and then you'll see a brand new virtual backgrounds box. And so there are pre-uploaded images in there already. We've got a partnership with Shutterstock. So there's like 10 really, really cool virtual backgrounds already in there, but you can easily upload the picture of your choice, enable it, and uh, it works very well. A, a lot of our, our folks on our team have been using it. And looks, it looks great in the background. Yeah. Uh, Jane says in chat, I'm bouncing between the chat and the Q&A, uh, so the moderator role is, it, role is almost one of a producer now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, some of the um, some of the panels that I've been doing, I've, I've literally been producing and using, you know, external software to capture my BlueJeans meeting and then stream it to YouTube. And it's, it's not just a matter of moderating saying, hey, it's your turn to talk, but it's a matter of producing and switching my camera angles and, and things. If you look at... Uh, uh, I, if you look at the Let's Do Video podcast, a few videos back, I did a video a live stream with um, with Blue Jeans, and I used green screen technology, and I had all sorts of things going, and I was producing and moderating and interviewing all all at the same time. Hopefully, I did a good job. Uh, for the green screen, do you project onto the screen? No, no, it's all done in software. You just have a green screen behind you, and you turn on the software, and the the computer does it. Um, can I ask what mic you're using? Uh, I just acquired Audio Technica uh, headset. How do they sound? Um, this is a Blue Yeti made by Logitech. Uh, it's pretty popular with with younger streamers. Uh, the reason is it's USB. If you use a real, you know, an old school microphone, they have that other plug and interface, and you need all of these connectors to get it to work with your computer. This is just a USB mic. But it looks like a big fancy mic, right? How cool is this? So this is this is this is pretty popular. I'm not, um, you, you know, there are some, you know, I know audio because audio is the most important video. Uh, but there are some people that are really microphone men and women, and they can tell you the difference between the Audio Technica and 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 the Blue Yeti and this and that and the benefits of all of them. I, I could just say, hey, this is how I sound on this one. Uh, when the voice of the presenter is not quite clear, could it be the computer or the quality of the webinar? It really could be anything. It could be a bad internet. It, it could be something in your Windows settings. It could be a problem with your microphone. It's, it's, there's a whole bunch of troubleshooting you got to do. How do you encourage participants to use video? A lot of people stay audio only. Um, the way I did that with my team, with meetings, is to let them attend on audio for a while and let them see how they get left out of the conversation. Because imagine you're in a meeting room with five people and one person is sitting under the table. Aren't you gonna ignore that person? You're not gonna talk to that person. And when that person starts talking, you're gonna be annoyed because you make faces at everyone else because they can't see you. Uh, if you like feeling like a second class person in the meeting, you're gonna be happy on audio. But eventually, 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 you're going to feel left out. And you know what? If there are some people, if there's 3% of people who just are never going to be on, on video, that's fine. You know, that, that's fine. But it's unfortunate because they are going to be less effective. Uh, let me see. Does the guest have a, have a Blue Jeans account to participate in my webinar? No, I think attendees just click and join, right, Justin? Exactly. You send out the invitation link, and in the browser of their choice, they can enter your event without any downloads. Okay. I think I might have missed a few. I'm trying to scroll through. I love I love the fact that there's so much chat and so much Q&A that I'm worried about uh, I might have missed some. <laughs> oh, a high five, though, by the way, just from uh, switching between the two and, and following up with these folks. Thanks. Uh, and Anne says, it's been amazing. I have to jump to another meeting. Thanks for everything. Learned so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Dono, basic light kit to use. Oh, actually, let me, let me, share, let me share the light kit I use because it's, it's – I'm going to look it up on Amazon. Um, hold on a second, and I'll share it with you guys. Because I was surprised at how affordable it was. It was, it's, it was like, I thought I was going to have to spend $300 to get good lighting. And um, it, it turns out it was like it was like 50 bucks, and it looks like one of those, I, I got to show you, it looks like one of those um, professional photographer things. They look all fancy. Let's see if I can find. Hey, David, it. while you're looking for that, are is the sun is the window in 
front of you. Is there any natural light right here, or is this all artificial light? The window is in front of me, but I have the shades shut because um, I have the, the camera setting set for this light because I stream at night a lot. So if I open the, 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 the natural light, although natural light is best, I would have to readjust everything. At some point on my to-do list is to make a, um, is to have two camera settings, one for when I have natural light, which would be better, and one for when I have this light. But right now I just keep it all like this so that it, um, here we go. So that it stays. Let me share screen. And I'm not. Uh, by the way, I'm not endorsing this exact kit. <laughs> uh, I, I'm just. Um, uh, I'm just showing you the kind of thing that I'm using. Let me see. Are you seeing this? Yep. So it's got one of them them light boxes so that it doesn't shine in my face. And it fifty bucks with the extra bulb. So so that when I first got one without the extra bulb, it was like thirty bucks or something. And it makes a huge difference, uh, especially if you're going to be doing any sort of green screen stuff. Green screen doesn't work so good if it's not lit well. Great point. Oh, and, and one more point on that. Um, just to go back to my main point that it is all a journey. There is no checklist. It is a, it is a path we walk down. When I first started, my wall was blue because my company's logo is blue, like blue jeans, and I had a blue wall. And you can use blue as a green screen, so for a year I was streaming using a blue screen instead of a green screen. Now it's not ideal because the reason you use green is there's no green in any, any human complexion. So no matter who you are, it doesn't affect your face. There's a little bit of blue, which isn't so bad. But the problem is I have all these blue t-shirts I love and I would be a floating head. <laughs> so it's all a journey. You can start with blue, you can get a green screen, um, but whatever it is, you want a lot of light on it. Good point. Yeah, I fight between natural and artificial light. This window right here is super bright, so this is all blackout curtain, and then I've got artificial lights in here. It took a minute, and it was a balancing act to get it right, but uh, I think it's just a trial and error thing, you know, when you're setting up. Your Elaine has a great question. Um, why not a laptop built-in camera? Um, just and, and maybe there's exceptions. Maybe there's some really expensive laptops out that have good cameras. Just in general, they're not bad. They're not good. They're just they're just not good. And for what camera I recommend? Any of the decent um, um, USB webcams, I'm using a Logitech Brio. Uh, a, a, a lot of people use the Logitech with the 9, 930, 920. Um, but yeah, any USB webcam in that range is just going to look a lot better than those little uh, laptop cameras. I could almost tell when, when someone's on it just by looking at it. Sometimes I'm surprised. Once in a while, I'll be like, oh, your camera's really good. And I'll be like, I'm on my laptop. I'm like, well, that's a good laptop. <laughs> but just in general. Uh, does front lighting eliminate reflection off your glasses? I don't see any reflection on yours. I guess it might be because of the angle or, or yeah, because the light's coming from there, so it would reflect down that way. Maybe if the, if the light was directly behind the camera, then you might see some reflection in it. Um, I believe external customers can also present without a BlueJeans account. Is that true? That's a question for Justin, I'm not sure. That is true. Yeah, if you are the event organizer, and you've got uh, maybe a number of different customers or analysts or anyone outside of your organization that are joining the call. When you create the event, a presenter link is produced and you just grab that link, copy and paste it, uh, send it over to your other guest speakers and they can join without a BlueJeans account and present from the browser of their choice. Okay, let's see a couple more. That's funny, I'm, I'm already the questions for you. Uh, one is if OBS works with, with uh, BlueJeans, I think we have to try that. Um, but OBS streaming software is pretty cool. I use it for a lot of things, uh, Brendan. But um, I think we'll have to get back to you on that one. Um, another one, um, do, 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 do. can you customize the console on BlueJeans? Uh, Julianne asked. I, by console, I, I know you guys have a dashboard for, for analytics that you can customize, but she, I don't know if she's talking about the user interface, which I think is pretty locked down. It is with the exception of some of the features that you can toggle on and off. So for example, in the event chat, I am so glad that we had event chat enabled for this presentation because everybody's been participating and chiming in and stuff like that. But if you do want to prevent people from chatting in, you can disable that. David talked about this a while ago in the beginning of the presentation, but the UI can be customized to a degree based on what features you want turned on or turned off and the audience it is you're addressing. So just uh, keep those things in mind, but yes, you can. Uh, you can disable features if you don't want them active. Um, uh, Marty wants to know how many people we can get on screen at once in, in a gallery view. 
nine in this uh, current version of BlueJeans events roadmap, we are increasing that. Uh, Brett, you're totally right. Those ring lights, the 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 makeup style lights for bloggers, they're 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 super cheap and they make a huge difference. A lot of streamers are using those little 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 ring lights. Um, people saying nice things, Steve, Donna, Justin, thank you. Oh, that's you, <laughs> uh, Patricia. Um, laptop cameras are not positioned for eye to eye contact. Correct. Actually, eye contact's a problem in general. If you if you cheat, you really got to look at the camera. Um, all right, I think uh, uh, um, I, just, I, I don't want to end. I don't want to stop. I'm having too much fun, but at some point we got to, huh? <laughs> I think you're right, too. And I'm just glad everyone, uh, we're, we've, we're coming up on an hour here and everyone is still sticking around, or at least a lot of folks. A few have just dropped, but I think it's probably a good place to end. David, what do you think? Oh, actually, one more because it's such a good one. If you're making a presentation and, and everyone is on video and they're all distracting each other, um, what do you do? I would switch to, to, to viewer Speaker mode, so you, everyone's seeing the speaker full size. You don't want to be in Brady Bunch view if you have a, a presenter. Totally true. That's yep. a good active, one to end on. Active speakers is definitely important. So this is great, everyone. Thank you so much for for joining us, David Maldo from Let's Do Video. Excellent ideas, great tips and tricks. I, I love that you're a go-to resource for this whole thing, and uh, you know I, I got a lot out of this as well. So thank you for uh, leading the charge on this and. Um, We'll talk soon. And for everyone else, we'll follow up with an email and a recording for this webinar right afterwards. But uh, have a great rest of your day. And thank you, everybody. Thank you.